Hello, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use System Commander version 2000 to install five operating systems. You've got MS-DOS 622 with Windows 3.1, you've got Windows 95, 98 SE and Windows Millennium Edition all on the same hard drive, all on the same computer. Hello, in today's video I'm going to be installing MS-DOS 6.22 alongside Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows Millennium Edition all on the same computer using System Commander version 2000 as a boot selector. So in order to do this the first thing we have to do is have the floppy disks ready. So we've, I've got System Disk Commander so it's System Commander 2000 on floppy disk. I've also got DOS 6.22 on floppy disk. And I've also got Windows 95 boot disk on floppy disk. Well, when I say floppy disk, I mean they're all on this USB stick and I've got a GoTech in the machine. So let's get started. So first thing to do, put the disk in or the USB pen and start up DOS 6.22. So I'm doing this on a Pentium slot 1 Pentium 233 computer with 3DFX card and uh, yeah so there it is booting up. Now booting from the floppy. I'm going to cancel out of F, uh, setup when it comes on by pressing the F3 button. Uh, this is MS-DOS 6.22 disk 1 and if you can see that okay it's a bit there's a bit of glare on it that's a bit better isn't it so let's uh, F3 out of that now we run F disk I'm gonna delete anything that's on the R drive so I'll delete partition delete primary DOS partition Oh, okay. Delete non-DOS partition first. Ah, oh, they're both. Okay, delete primary partition to, yes, and delete the other partition as well. Actually, I don't really need to delete that one. So the system will restart. I'll turn this on as well for... Oh. Okay. So I'll let the system restart again. Still seems to be a bit of glare, don't they? How's that? I've actually got a uh, little piezo speaker inside my GoTech, that's why you can hear the floppy drive sounds. Quite cool mod. Right, I should be able to format that partition. I'll format it with the S command. I can't quick form, maybe I can quick format it because it's been formatted before. Let's give it a go. Invalid drive specific. Okay, I haven't F disked it right. Not going so well so far, is it? Okay, so. What we need to do is delete partition, delete non-DOS partition. Okay, so let's create a DOS partition. So this one is going to be the partition for running DOS 6.22, Windows 3.1 and also the partition that's going to have System Commander itself installed. I don't want to use them the maximum size. And I'm going to put a partition of, let me think, 800 megabytes, no, 850 megabytes. There we go. Primary DOS partition created. I've got to set the active partition as well. 
which is C, no, one, sorry. Unfortunately, show on my adaptive. Restart and come back into DOS again. Now, I've already prepared my disks with uh, System Commander 2000. You can download that at Winworld PC website if you wish. I'm using System Commander version 2000. Uh, obviously, you can get DOS 6.22 from uh, Winworld PC website as well. I'm hoping to set up a, a, a basic website to describe this process as well. But uh, let's uh, exit setup without installing again. We don't want to do that. Format C colon forward slash S. It won't let me quick format because it's a brand new partition. Unfortunately, F this for DOS does not allow that. So we format the drive. So this computer's actually got a 12 gigabyte hard drive in, but FDisk for DOS 6.22 only sees 8 gigabytes, but the system commander should see more. Because it's running in FAT. FAT 16. So yeah, it will format nicely. So it's going quite quickly because it's only a small partition. Well, it's a big partition in the day, but okay, let's we call this one DOS. DOS 622, so we've got our information there. So now we need to make a directory on the C drive. I'm gonna call it SC install, system commander install. Now over three floppy disks or three floppy disk images on the GoTech is the system commander files. So if I change to A drive, you can see there's the first disk. So all I've got to do is copy star dot star C S C install. This makes it easier to install because then it's on the hard drive. doesn't take too long to do. I didn't realise but on disk one there's actually a PDF file which is here. So if you if you do download System Commander 2000 from Winworld website and you're not sure how to use it, there's a PDF on, on there as well that you can run in any modern PDF utility. It's got some great documentation for it. So you've got to do that with disk, do all the disks. So change disk over and same again. You can't see it in the camera shot, but I'm actually cha changing on the GoTech down below. The computer isn't this one underneath the monitor, it's a computer down here, a tower that I'll build. So yeah, that's this two copying. There's just one more to do. Last one. And there we have it, now we can launch it from the directory we've just copied into. So we change into the SC install and set up. 
and his System Commander 2000 setup. So uh, let's install it. Yes, so I agreed to the license terms. All right, pull this best. And it's uh, YouTube with information. LOL. Laugh out loud. Okay, now the uh, serial number is provided in the documentation of uh, System Commander 2000 on the WinWorld websites. So yeah, once you're ready to install, you, you can create a boot disk, but I've already got them, so I don't need that. So, but yes, I have a boot disk. Keep the path as the same, and it will install the uh, program files. To make a utility disk, which is recommended, I've done that already, so I don't need to do that either. And yep, we've got our user ID and password for the uh, security part of it. We don't really need that to be honest, unless we're going to put passwords on the operating systems. Skip notes, skip notes, skip notes, because I've done all that. Exit. So now it can say you can reboot. So take the floppy disk out, reboot, control out, and delete. And we should be presented with our system commander menu. Days later versions of System Commander. I haven't tried any of them yet. So there you go, there's MS-DOS 6.22. It's the only operating system we've got on there here so far. So if I click onto that, it will load MS-DOS as normal. So the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is copy a CD driver to MS-DOS because my Windows 3.1 is on a CD. So put the disk in and go to A. You won't have to do this if your Windows 3.1 is on floppy disk, but I copied it onto CD. I copied all the Windows onto CD to be honest. So uh, yeah, we need to uh, grab, what do we need to grab? That's the wrong disk actually. Change over, try this different disk. Yeah, so I'm going to be using this NECID.SYS. So copy NECID.SYS C colon backwards slash, and I'm going to rename it to NEC.SYS. So yeah, okay. So there's our nec.sys at the bottom. I haven't got edit on here because um, it, MS DOS isn't fully installed yet, but I'm gonna just switch to the DOS disk. I will install DOS 6 later, but for quickness, I'm just gonna do it like this. So. File open config.sys. Now there's nothing in config.sys yet, except for a couple of REM statements. So all I've got to do is device equals c colon nec.sys d four. This just enables the CD driver. I'm going to also need to copy msc scdexec. So now if we re reboot again, without a disk and drive of course. Our CD driver should be loaded into RAM. Of course if you don't need CD drive access you can skip all this part if you decide to do something similar yourself. This is just for CD drive. So boot to the MS-DOS again. There's our CD driver. Got two CD drives in it, so it should pick up two, which it has. Now we can run the MSC dex command. Uh, what did I call it? Called in there. There we have it. There's our CD drives. So the next step 
is to put the disc in, which I think it's already in. Let's just check. I think it's in the E drive. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, yeah, if I CD into Win31. We can proceed to install Windows 3.1. It's actually Windows 3.1, not 3.11. This program installs 3.1 to run on your computer. Yeah, just do it as normal, see Windows. I change this to British and this to international because I'm from the UK. And uh, yeah, setup will copy the files. And of course, you can go through the uh, Windows installation process as normal. I want setup printers. Shouldn't take too long on this computer because it's a Pentium 233. It's a lot easier to install it from a CD than it is from the floppy disks because you have to keep swapping the disks. If you copy all the contents of all the floppy disks onto a CD in one folder, you can run it from there instead. And it won't ask you to insert any more disks. Or you can do the same thing from a hard drive instead. Just make a folder on your hard drive, copy all the contents of each floppy disk into that one folder and one setup from there. And and if you need to reinstall in the future, you've already got the setup files on your hard drive ready. So yeah, Windows 3.1 is installed. You can yeah do the modifications as normal. And there we have it, Windows 3.1. So the next step, is to install Windows 95. So what we do now is we we'll wait for System Commander to come on. Press Alt and O for Oz Wizard. Press Oh, okay. It will analyze the system and then you'll be presented with a graphical user interface similar to Windows with mouse support. So we go specify the type of OS installation. So the next step is to do a new installation because this is the operating system wizard. So next on here, we want Windows any type. Windows 95. Now you've got a choice of the upgrade regular for low SR with that 32 option, but I'm going to go for regular because that's one I've got. Now it will, it will say suggest the size really small like that, but I'd like to increase it, increase it to about just under the fat 16 limit 1998 megabytes, 1000, so just under two gigabytes. Yeah, it does alter it. Before you do this, actually, I forgot to send, mention, if you go to settings, disable its surface tests because if you leave that, if you leave that box checked, it will surface test each partition you make and it takes a long time. So yeah, so back to do that again. So Windows any type, Windows 95, regular, we boot disk yet. Yeah, because you're going to need the Windows boot disk just as normal as if you were setting it up as, as a standalone OS. So next, we want to do that again. 
That will create our new partition. See, it's really quick. If you didn't disable that surface test, it would have surface test the whole partition. It takes a long time. But at least it does on this computer anyway. So now it will reboot and it will request the floppy disk to install Windows 95, the uh, startup disk. So we'll wait for that to happen. Don't insert the disk yet. Wait until it asks you to insert the disk. Now, as you can see, it says insert this. So we want the Windows 95 boot disk. So that's number six on my GoTech. So yep, choose okay. So you can see it's starting Windows 95. We are going to need the driver because I've got 95 on CD-ROM. So the drives will appear. There we have it, there's our drives. So type in the C. As you can see now, the C drive has got no files in it because parti what Partition Manager is, System Commander, sorry, what System Commander has done is he done a partition so the computer only knows the C drive is blank now so you can install Windows 95 without worrying about deleting the previous OS. That's why System Commander is very powerful. So uh, yeah, okay, so we need to go to the E drive, find our Windows 95. I've got Windows 3.195 and 98 on one disk. So CD Win 95. Oops. CD Win 95. Set up and I always do forward slash IS to stop it from doing a disk check, which makes the process a bit quicker. And now we can proceed to install our Windows 95. So if you just go for the Windows 95 setup as normal, install it to see Windows again, just because it's the only partition that's available to the system at the moment, so it's all good. So yeah, of course do it, do your installation. Part of magic of video ed editing, I'll see you on the other side of the installation. Because it does take a long time on this computer. So yeah, just, just, just install it to see Windows as normal. Don't forget DOS and Windows 3.1 is currently hidden from the system so it won't affect it. So on, on, I'll see you on the other side. Longest part of any uh, multi-boot in, is installing all of the operating systems this does take time so luckily via video editing i don't have to uh, make a way through all this process so uh, let's skip past so we have come to the first reboot remove any floppy disks and it may be the case that windows 95 override system commander from the MBR we'll find out in a minute once it comes on yes indeed it has so uh, we wait f we'll just proceed with the installation and we'll see what happens on the second reboot so here is Windows 95 installed it has overwritten the system commander boot manager so what we need to do is restart the computer in the case of the system commander not returning which it will not some sometimes then you need to run check MBR from the utility disk you can make the utility disks from within System Commander. So in Windows, just run check MBR. 
from the utility disk and it will say can't really see that very well but it will say system commander MBR successfully reloaded so now you can go ahead and restart the computer And there we have it. So we've now got MS-DOS 6 and Windows 95. So yeah, there's your Windows 3.1. If we restart, and Windows ninety five is at the bottom. So now what we need to do is to go to OS Wizard again. And go for new installation. Windows. Windows 98. Regular reboot disk. I want a lot more than that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try 3500, see if there's enough. Okay, make sure you might have to do this every time. Oh no, it's already disabled. So partition, no, not that one. We want OS Wizard, new installation, Windows, Windows 98, regular reboot diskette, 3500. I'm going to go for it. Create our partition. And yep, so we press OK to reboot, make sure the Windows boot disk is in. But before, only after System Commander comes on. So we wait for the system commander first. Now it says please insert the disk. You must make sure you wait for that prompt to come on before you insert the disk. Otherwise it will just override system commander. I'm just going to use the Windows 95 startup disk because mm -hmm. it works with Windows 98 as well. Going to need the CD ROM driver. And your CC is blank again. So both Windows 3.1 and 95 are now hidden. So I can go into the E drive. No, X copies in on here, okay. Doesn't matter.
Yeah, okay. So set up and proceed to install Windows 98. There it is, Windows 98 setup. So this is gonna take a while, so we'll cut, jump cut there. So just like Windows 95, Windows 98 on first reboot seems to disable System Commander. So uh, yeah, okay. Let's wait for this to finish installing. So third reboot Windows 98, let's see if System Commander restores itself. I don't think it will, but we'll find out. Nah, it's just loading up Windows 98. So both Windows 95 and 98 destroy the uh, System Commander on the MBR. So we're gonna have to run check MBR from the DOS, uh, the uh, utility disk provided with system commander again from within windows so we'll just wait for it to finish installing so now windows 98 is installed but we now must also run check mbr from the uh, system commander 2000 utility floppy and you can say it's it wasn't found but it's reinstalled it so now we can uh, shut down and restart the computer making sure there's no floppy disks in the drive at this point and we should be presented with the system commander 2000 menu once again And there it is, now you can see we've got DOS, which also has Windows 3.1, Windows 95 and 98, all on the same hard drive, on the same computer. So now the final part of, of this video is to do Windows Millennium Edition, for some strange reason. <laughs> so yeah, okay, so joking aside, we've got new installation. Okay, we need Windows again. You can obviously you can do Linux, Linux, Linux and Unix and other OSes like OS2 and stuff. Uh, I'll show you them all actually. Look, you can do all, all these kind of operating systems. Just uh, just double check that uh, surface test is not enabled unless you've got a 40 hour drive. You might want to keep that enabled, but it does make the process much quicker if you disable that. So Windows any type, Windows Millennium Edition, regular reboot disk, now I'm going to want, I'm going to say if there's enough, I'm not sure how much space is left, 4 gigabytes, yeah it looks like there's enough, I'll try, try taking it up to 5 then. So once again it will reboot do not insert your Windows Millennium Edition startup disk or any startup disk until the system commander screen is displayed. I'm just going to use a Windows 95 in a startup disk because it works. It works with Millennium Edition as well. So wait for the system commander screen. Now, it's, now it says please insert the disk. Making sure it's the right disk on the GoTech. Press OK or press Enter. Wait for it to load. I'm going to put CD in as well. 
Full Millennium Edition. Pop on a separate CD. I want the uh, top one, yeah. That seems to work with my drives. She's quite an old driver, 93, 94. The Oak CD ROM SYS driver is probably better than this one, but it seems to work okay. So if you're looking to see again, you'll see there's nothing in there because Windows 3.1, DOS 6.22, and Windows 95 or, or, and 98 are all hidden. So if we go to E, Set up. Let's have a look what's on our disk first of all. Yeah, we want this. Same process again, but this time with Windows and Millennium Edition. So I'll jump cut. I'll jump cut it here until this is installed. So just like Windows 95 and 98, with Windows Millennium Edition, you still have to run to check MBR from the uh, System Commander Utility Disk. Mm. So we just double click it. And that will uh, reload our System Commander. And that's it, that's all of the operating systems on one hard drive and on one computer. So if you restart. You'll see the system commander menu come on after running that check MBR command or program. And there we have it. We've got MS-DOS 95 98 and ME all on the same computer. Of course you can uh, add even more operating systems if you've got enough hard drive. But yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.